The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> For everybody who loves mellow, melt-in-the-mouth cheddar cheese, we have a piece of great news. It's about Kraft's new natural cheddar called K-Brand. K-Brand is for folks who really get a thrill out of superb quality cheddar cheese. Remember the name, K-Brand Natural Cheddar. And listen for more about this masterpiece in cheese making a little later on in the program. <laughs> It's late afternoon in Summerfield as the water commissioner briskly advances upon his retreating shadow, gives it a column right up the walk, and then races it to the front door in the warmth of home. <clears throat> Getting chilly out. Well, nothing like a cold snap to stimulate the appetite. Leroy, you're practicing the piano. Sure, I've been practicing faithfully ever since I got home from school. Huh? Whose window did you break on the way home? break anything up, honest. Cleaned up my room, too. Let's see. November, December. Leroy. Huh? Could your sudden interest in being good have anything to do with the nearness of Christmas? Christmas? When is it this year? When is it this year? <laughs> what am I going to get, huh? What are you going to buy me? A new football, huh? A new bike, huh? A new chemistry set? I've been practicing, now, huh? Now, now, Leroy, take it easy. I haven't gotten around to thinking about Christmas yet. Yeah. Christmas is only 43 days away. Let's get off the dime, Monk. Young man, I don't know what you mean by such expressions as let's get off the dime. Oh, you don't? Well, that means... Don't you... explain them to me. And don't rush me into Christmas. I'll figure those things out in good time. Okay. Gosh. Practice your piano, Leroy. We'll have a Christmas in December. The 25th of December. I don't feel like practicing now. I think I'll go out and kick my football over the house. My old football... Now, Leroy, if you've finished your piano, why don't you get busy with your homework? Get your grades up. You flunked history, and Santa Claus doesn't remember little boys who don't study. Santa Claus? <laughs> okay, I'll read my history book. That's a boy. I'll glance over the evening paper. Can I have the funny section on Dick Tracy? Dick Tracy? Your homework first, Leroy, then Dick Tracy. I just want to see what Mumbles is doing. Forget about Mumbles for a minute and see what George Washington is doing. That's what they quiz you on. <laughs> Okay. Look at that boy. Sprawled right in the middle of the floor. I think he's going to grow up to be a wrestler. Well, at least he'll be an educated wrestler. Bongo, bongo, bongo. I don't want to leave the Congo. Oh, no, 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 no. Hi, Auntie Leroy. Hi, Mom. Hello, my dear. Come in. Wait till I hang up my coat. Bingo, bango, bongo. I'm so happy in the jungle. What's that? New song. Civilization. <laughs> Is it supposed to help it or harm it? <laughs> bongo, bongo, bingo. Hey, Unc, when was the Declaration of Independence signed? Declaration of Independence? Yeah. <clears throat> well, John Hancock was one of the signers. He's been dead a long time. Marjorie, I'm trying to answer a question for Leroy. Okay. Uh, will you give me the fashion section, please, Uncle Mort? I want to look at some coats. Coats? Yeah. Here you are. Thank you. Dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum -da. Now, my boy, what was the question? When was the Declaration of Independence signed? July 4th, 1775. Oh, yeah, I knew they signed it on a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, try this one, Uncle. What were the first ten amendments called? The first, uh... Leroy, it appears to me that these are all questions you've had before. Have you been demoted? No. The freedom train's coming to town, and our teacher says we've got to know all the answers before we can go to see it, to get more out of it. It's an excellent idea. Some very wonderful documents. Yes, well trained, too. Red, white, and blue streamliner, Marines garden it and everything. Marines? Well, I may go down myself. Oh, look, Hunky, new winter coats. And do I need one very badly? Do you like the style? Style? Let me see. Sixty dollars. Mm, pretty stylish. Well, they are a little high, but... Well, everybody in school has a new coat, Uncle Mort. Francie has fur trim and thinks she's so smart. Well, we'll think about it, my dear. But prices are going up. 
And your old uncle's salary has remained the same. But, Unky, darling, you got a raise just last month. Yeah, four dollars and eighty-three cents. <laughs> and I bought a pork chop with it, remember? <laughs> Where the pork chop went. What? Uncle, you're getting another chin, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, you're tickling, Marjorie. Dinner ready, Mr. Gilsley. New coat, Unky? New coat? Well, I'll see what I can do, my dear. Get us on the table. Yeah, that smells wonderful, Bertie. Come along, Leroy. You can't become a college professor overnight. I'll be down in just a minute. I'm stuck. Oh? What's the question, my boy? Saying. He said she's out like a light. Let's go. Now let's go to dinner. There you are, Commissioner. Your face is as fresh as the day you were born. Huh? What you for? What's that? Oh, sorry, Commissioner. Didn't mean to startle you. Must have had a hard afternoon at the office. Or did my tender touch woo you to sleep? I wasn't sleeping, Floyd. Just give me a shave. Another one? Oh. Well, I was thinking, Floyd. Sometimes I get carried away in my thoughts. Oh, sure, I know. Comb it dry or you want something on it? Uh, uh, dry, Floyd. Well, I'll toss on some Summerfield water. It's not very wet anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, is some neat new commission? You ain't your usual jolly self. Just thinking, Floyd. Thinking. Oh. Thinking how much it costs nowadays to live. Yeah, I know what you mean. Takes all I rake in to keep the house and love you respectable. You call that living? I don't. Winter's here, too. The holidays are upon us. Leroy wants a million things. Marjorie wants a new coat. New coat? That's serious, all right. Well, Marjorie doesn't ask for things she doesn't need. Getting so a man on salary can't cut it, Floyd. I guess I should be picking up some extra money someplace. Say, uh, you ever think of diluting the water you sell down there, Commit? <laughs> <laughs> Why, if you charge the same and cut it two to one, you Please, can... Please, Floyd. <laughs> now, let's forget about the water. Honey, kidding. Well, I'm trying to be serious. There you are. And I know how it is to be hounded for a coat, Commission. My bride's been beating the drum for a red fox chubby for the past ten years. <laughs> you know what? Fellow stopped in just this morning, left his card instead of a tip. Raved about the shave and invited me to come up and pick out a fur, 50% off. 50% off? Yeah, but I ain't telling Lovey. She snarls enough without having a pelt to go with it. <laughs> but 50% off? Where is he, Floyd? It's at the Summerfield Hotel, I think, one of them wholesalers. Yeah, find the card, will you, Floyd? Where is it? Might be worth money. Uh, oh, here it is. Yeah, Fowler was the guy's name. Let's see. W.R. Fowler. Wholesale diamonds and furs. Present this courtesy card for 50% off. Well, thanks, Floyd. But, Commissioner, you give it to me. Instead of a tip, Floyd. Yeah, but... Well, here's a tip. A lousy dime? You usually tip 20 cents. 50% off, same as the card, Floyd. (laughs) Besides, you didn't trim my mustache. Six twenty. Six twenty-two. Yeah, six twenty. Where's that sample room? Oh, six thirty. Better get out my courtesy card. Come in, neighbor. The door's open. Uh, Mr. Fowler? That's me, neighbor. I'm Throckmorton P. Gillisley. A friend of mine gave me one of your courtesy cards. Yes, yes. Come in, come in. Yeah, thank you. So you're interested in buying a little something wholesale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, wholesale. (laughs) Well, there aren't any big buyers in at the moment, so I may just help you out. I like your face, neighbor. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Yes, sir. And you came just in time, neighbor. I'm closing out one of my main lines of diamonds and am now in a position to offer you this Eye of Africa diamond ring. At not one half, not one third, but one fourth the original cost. Oh, that's nice, Mr. Fowler, but I really came to look at a coat. A fur coat. Glad to hear it, neighbor, because I'm now in a position to offer you this genuine northern seal-type garment at an unprecedented saving to you. Feels pretty good. Just look, neighbor. Don't handle the merchandise. Oh. Oh, sorry. 
And take the word of W.R. Fowler for it. This coat's a killing. Your golden opportunity. A $500 garment at 50% off. Yours for only $250. $250? Takes your breath away, doesn't it? You want it in a box over your arm or on your back? <laughs> well, it isn't quite what I had in mind. You What's see... the matter, neighbor? Is it warm in here? Stand by the window. I always leave it open. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. I think I'd better be going, though. I was really thinking about buying a little cloth coat for my niece, Marjorie, and I just a stopped... A cloth coat? I understand, neighbor. We're all feeling the pinch a little bit. But, neighbor, I like your face. I don't want your niece to have a cloth coat. I wanted to have this genuine Northern Seal type chubby right here. Uh, looks fine, Mr. Fowler, but... Uh... I'll let you in on a little secret. Uh -huh. This lovely garment happens to have an unpaid charge of $30 against it. You can have this valuable coat worth $500 on any market any time for the charge against it. Thirty bucks. Thirty dollars? Well, that's less than a cloth coat. It's your golden opportunity, neighbor, but a special offer to you, so don't tell your friends. Grab it, neighbor, quick. Oh, Marjorie, I have something for you. Your niece just took her books upstairs, Bill, eh? Care to come into your parlor and sit down a minute? <laughs> well, Judge, when did you come over? I was just driving by and smelled Bertie's coffee. Oh, huh? was Bertie making some coffee? Well, she is now. <laughs> Nobody makes coffee quite like Bertie. What's in the box, Gildy? None of your business. It's from Marjorie, Judge, not for you. Merely expressing an interest. Well, it is a little surprise. Fur coat. A fur coat for Marjorie. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. But aren't they a little expensive? Well, not if you know where to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get it, Gildy? Hogan Brothers? Hogan Brothers? Retail prices? I wasn't born yesterday, Judge. Have a look. Well, it does look like... Wait a minute. I'll say you weren't born yesterday, Gildy. You were born today. What? That fur's older than the Lewis and Clark expedition. <laughs> Where'd you buy it? Down a dark alley or up in some hotel room? Oh, what do you know about hotel rooms? I know it's one of the oldest dodges in the world. Stranger comes to town, puts up at a good hotel, rents a suite, peddles cheap furs for a couple of days, and then skips. Who took you in, Gildy? Nobody took me in, Judge. I got a $500 fur coat for $30, that's all. Why? Well, because I have an honest face. <laughs> You've got a good, big, fat head, too, Gildersleeve. <laughs> this should be reported to the Better Business Bureau. That's what they're for, to protect gullibles like you. No, I'll see here. Who can't give that moth trap to Marjorie? Why, look, you can pull the fur out of the hands full. See? Look. Stop that, Hooker. You put that fur back. <laughs> look at it shed. Better not take it out in a stiff breeze, Gildy. All you'll have left is bald rabbit skins. <laughs> Quick, Judge, give me that box top. What's the big discussion all about? Oh, hello, Judge. Afternoon, Marjorie. Uncle Moore, did you call me a minute ago? Uh, hello, Marjorie, my dear. Hey, what's in the box? Box? Oh, this box. Your uncle has been assuring me he just made a marvelous purchase. No, Don't Judge. Don't worry, Gildy. I won't let the cat out of the bag. Say, I wonder if that's what it could be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. Goodbye. What's the matter, Gildy? Can't you stay for coffee? Big swindler. Guy Fowler can't take me for thirty dollars. I thought there was something phony about his setup all the time. Come in, neighbor. The door's open. Neighbor. Now, see here, Fowler. Glad to see you back, neighbor. I don't think you saw my Star of Africa three-carat diamond ring. Don't give me that, Fowler. I want my money back. Your money back? That coat is a fake. A fake? You darn right it's a fake. Give me 30 bucks before I call the cops. Why, of course, if you aren't satisfied, I'll be... Uh, let me see that coat. Why, this is amazing. You're right. It is a fake. You bet it is. I suspected I got a bad coat in that last shipment, but how could you tell it, neighbor? What business are you in? Uh, me? Well, I'm city official. Water commissioner. You shouldn't be wasting your time as a city official. You're a natural-born fur merchant. You, uh... <laughs> you want to make some real money? Um, well, I... Look, 
Look, just got a telegram. My grandmother's sinking fast. Here I am with three coats left, four diamond rings, and a train to catch. $2,000 worth of merchandise I'll let you have for $500, neighbor, and have a Merry Christmas. 500 Just give me my money back. You don't have 500 on you. All right, I'm a compassionate man. Here's your $30 back. Now what do you have? Well, uh, with a 30 and what I have here... I've got $94.60. I'll take it, neighbor. It's a deal. What? My loss is your game. What? Toss the rings in your pocket, throw the coat over your arm, and you're in business. Yes, but... Your telephone's ringing, neighbor. My telephone? Hope it's a sale, neighbor, and I'll let you know how my grandmother turns out. But, Fowler, why are you going out that way? Always leave my hat and coat on the fire escape. So long, neighbor. But, Fowler! Oh, oh, the telephone. Yes? Hello, Mr. Fowler. Whoop, hooker. I have the president of the Better Business Bureau with me in the lobby. We'd like to come up and inspect your alleged wholesale fur business. Well, they won't catch me here. Six stories down. Well, Fowler made it. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. For folks who love really rich-tasting, mellow, natural cheddar cheese, here's some glorious news. Kraft's master cheesemakers now make natural cheese just like that from pasteurized milk. It's a new thrill for folks who love superb cheese. K-brand natural cheddar. That's K-A-Y, K-brand. Mellow with a melt-in-the-mouth texture and made from milk that is carefully and thoroughly pasteurized. I'd like to try this new K brand. How do I buy it? You'll see the big 10-pound bar in your dealer's refrigerator case marked K brand natural. K brand natural all down the top and sides of the sparkling transparent wrapper. And I want to tell you something else about that wrapper. K brand natural is sealed right in that sparkling wrapper before it goes to the curing room. K brand natural made of pasteurized milk ages to mellow goodness right in its own spick-and-span wrapper. You mean this natural cheese has no cheesecloth, no rind? That's right. Curing natural cheese in a sealed wrapper is another craft triumph. Taste K-Brand tomorrow. Have your dealer cut a good big portion for you from the K-Brand bar. Here's the natural cheddar your folks will like best of all, with pie on the cheese tray for snacks for sandwiches. It's superb cheese for particular people. K-Brand natural cheddar made of pasteurized milk. Well, let's return to the great Gildersleeve. Ordinarily a capable sleeper, he spent a fitful night, then awoke with a start, popped out of bed, dashed for his trousers, fumbled for his wallet, and looked inside to see if it was true. It is true. I did buy those furs and diamonds. $94.60. Could have bought Marjorie a good coat and Leroy something nice for Christmas. And now, after an early breakfast, we find the great man bearing his heavy burden downtown and looking for a place to unload it. Hi, Commissioner. What are you doing downtown so early? Uh, just dropped in to show you something, Floyd. I'll be right with you as soon as I finish shaving. You know, I went up to see that man about the furs. Uh-huh. He gave me such a good deal, I bought a couple of extras. Yeah. Take a look, Floyd. A $500 fur coat for 30 bucks. Lovey, love it. Yeah. Not interested, Commish. Besides, I got more hair on my floor than you got in that coat. <laughs> Them animals must have given up hard. <laughs> but, Floyd, you got me into this. Not that far, I didn't. But, say... If you want to get rid of them, why don't you have some cards printed up like Fowler? Leave them with me. I'll pass them out to the trade. No, thanks, Floyd. I'll get rid of them honestly. Ah, good morning, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeves. <laughs> I'm glad you dropped in. Oh, you are, P.V.? So am I. In fact, I've had you on my mind since last night. Well, I've had somebody on my mind, too. Mrs. Dalrymple. Doris Dalrymple? What's this, P.V.? She just bought a lipstick and cashed a check. I I trust her check is all right, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh. You don't have to worry about Doris Dalrymple's checks, P.V. Her husband left her a lot of money. 
Big manufacturer. I'm glad to hear that. Pretty big check. Peavy, she might have spent that whole check right here if you'd have had the right merchandise. Uh, have you ever thought of putting in a line of fur coats and jewelry? <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, did you ever go in a fur or jewelry store and try to buy aspirin? <laughs> Not that a man couldn't use aspirin in some of those places. We mustn't be afraid of new ideas, Petey. There's nothing that'll bring women into your store like fur coats and jewelry. Why, you could be the Marshall Field of Summerfield. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, you could, Petey. You're a mighty good salesman. Well, now. <laughs> no, find me, Mr. Jones. Leave the telephone. Yeah, go right ahead, Petey. Hurry back. Hi, right, George. Petey, I think I've got him interested. Maybe we both can make a little money. No. He can keep anything he makes over ninety four sixty. Well, anything over a hundred dollars, we'll say. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Gillis, you? you know that was quite a coincidence, a party asking about fur coats. Oh, that's so? We'd better get the line in right away, Peavy. We? Oui. Yeah, holidays are coming. There'll be a lot of requests. And I happen to know where we can get some fur coats and jewelry, make a lot of money. And I'll let you in on the deal. But why me, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, because I like your face, neighbor. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I, I like your face, too. Yes, sir, Peavy, this is a golden opportunity. Mr. Gildersleeve, I believe you're trying to tell me something. Special offer, Peavy. Grab it quick. Well, most salesmen, when they come in here, usually begin by buying a little something. They call it uh, baiting me, I believe. All right, Peavy, give me a box of aspirin. A small one. Box of aspirin. Uh, any particular brand? Any brand, Peavy. This is your idea. Yes, but it's your headache. <laughs> Here you are. Thank you. Here's your aspirin. Now then, let's get down to business, Peavy. How about putting in this line of furs and jewelry? I'm sorry, Mr. Jogersley, but I, I don't think I'd be interested. But, Peavy, I just bought something. You have to be a little cautious when you invest in furs. Now take that telephone call from the Better Business Bureau. Routine warning. Warning? Some chap trying to sell questionable furs and jewelry right here in Summerfield. Huh? The police are trying to round up the evidence, you say. Police? <laughs> I'm getting out of here, Peavy. Here's your aspirin. Give me my dime back. The whole deal's off. Hmm. I thought I had that aspirin sold. Uh, now the police are on my trail. Me, the water commissioner. Well, they can't throw a man in jail if they can't find the evidence. I'll drive out and burn it behind the reservoir. Yes, I'll do it. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, wait! Zook, Doris Dalrymple. Fine time to meet her. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, how nice to see you. Uh, going my way? Well, I was just going up the river. Yeah, I mean, out to the reservoir. <laughs> Oh, then you won't mind dropping me off at home, will you? Home? Uh, Doris, have you an incinerator out in the back of your house? Uh, why, yes. Great, hop in. Isn't that cute? Oh! oh, you must be in a hurry. Oh, why, Mr. Gildersleeve, isn't that a fur coat sticking out of that box? Fur coat? Oh, may I take a peek? I didn't think you could see it. Oh, are you going to give it to some lucky girl? You feel lucky, you can have it. <laughs> it's for me? Well, I know your intentions are honorable, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I don't think a girl should accept a fur coat from a man, uh, unless she has a ring. Oh, huh? you want a ring? <laughs> Here, four of them. <laughs> Goodness. I must say, this is the most unusual proposal I've ever had. A proposal? Now, Doris. Now, wait a minute, Mrs. Dalrymple. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, look out. Don't run over that policeman. Policeman? Oh, oh I didn't see him. Oh, he's coming over. Quick, Doris, sit on the evidence. Evidence? Well, come in. What's the big idea? Oh, uh, sorry, officer. <laughs> I didn't see you. Driving a little reckless, aren't you? Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve is in a reckless mood today, officer. He's just throwing diamonds and furs around. <laughs> Doris. Did I say something? Diamonds and furs? Hey, where'd you get that stuff? Uh, well, I can explain it, officer, but I'm afraid it's going to take time. Uh-huh. Then let's go where we can all sit down and be comfortable. You know the way to the police station, don't you, Commissioner? Well, you go two blocks and... <laughs> Well, 
Commissioner Gildersleeve and Mrs. Dalrymple. Mrs. Dalrymple, how did you get mixed up with this hoodlum? <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> <laughs> yes, by George, it's great to see you, Chief. Always nice to have a fellow jolly boy around when there's a little trouble. <laughs> Please, Commissioner. Let's not drag the good name of the club through the criminal courts. Now, see here, Chief. I'm no criminal. I spent good money for that stuff. Yes, and I can't think of anyone I'd rather see the evidence found on. Uh, it's all we need for a conviction. Conviction? Now, wait a minute. A conviction carries a jail sentence of six months. Uh, County rock pile. But, Chief... Mr. Gildersleeve on the rock pile. Isn't that cute? <laughs> <laughs> now... Let's fill out this little form. But, Chief, I'm innocent. I was just a sucker. I'm gullible. Sure. So you want to file a complaint, don't you? You're a hero, Commissioner. What? If you hadn't brought in the evidence, we'd have had to let the guy go. Huh? What guy? Uh, hey, Sergeant, bring him in. Can you identify this man, Commissioner? This fellow? Well, hi, neighbor. <laughs> I'm a hero. <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again very soon. If you've got a man in your house who wants a good big slice of mellow cheddar cheese alongside of every piece of pie, then, lady, you'd better learn about Kraft's latest triumph right away. It's a wonderfully mellow, natural cheddar cheese with a real melt-in-the-mouth texture. And what's more, what's new, it's made of pasteurized milk. The name, K-Brand Natural Cheddar. That's K-A-Y, K-Brand. Rich and mellow tasting, made of carefully pasteurized milk, and aged right in its own spick and span wrapper. In your dealer's refrigerator case, you'll see the big bar and the sparkling wrapper marked K-Brand Natural. K-Brand Natural all down the top and sides. Have your dealer cut you a good portion. Taste the latest triumph of Kraft Master Cheesemakers right away. Ladies and gentlemen, the Association of Better Business Bureaus wanted us to point up the dangers of fraud and misrepresentation, which are always more prevalent during the holiday season. So be on the lookout for Sharpies like that Fowler fellow we dealt with this evening. There's no telling when they'll show up in your community. Take the advice of your Better Business Bureau. Investigate before you invest, like I do. Well, I got back my 9460. How oh, swell, Anki. Let's go downtown and pick out my new coat. Huh? I'll go along, too, Uncle. We can look at chemistry sets, bicycles, football. Now, Leroy. I better go, too, Mr. Gilsleeve. Holiday cooking coming up. We need a new stove. Oh, well. Come along, little family. We'll see how far it goes. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Tomorrow night, Victor Moore will be Al Jolson's guest on the Kraft Music Hall, heard over most of these NBC stations. Don't miss the fun. Remember, tomorrow night, for exact time, see your local paper. And listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further Adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Does your family like macaroni and cheese that's fluffy light with golden cheddar cheese flavor through and through? Then get Kraft Dinner from your food store tomorrow. One package of Kraft Dinner contains enough quick-cooking macaroni and golden Kraft grated to make a dish of macaroni and cheese that will serve four people. It's a swell, thrifty main dish. And Kraft Dinner cooks in just seven minutes. So for quick, thrifty, swell-tasting macaroni and cheese, get Kraft Dinner. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.